Our first wine in January is the Argentinian Malbec Bonarda. Malbec is a grape that was grown previously in France. Uh, it was grown in Bordeaux and in the Loire region. It's not a really easy grape to grow. It's subject to frosts, it needs a lot of heat units, and it tends to yield fairly low. It's, it's got a thin skin, so it's also subject to fine diseases and bird predation. It's still grown in parts of France, particularly in the Cahors region, where it's known as the black wine, the black wine of Cahors. Where it really thrives, however, is Argentina. The hot, dry climate ensures that they can ripen the fruit perfectly. It's got a lovely juicy fruitiness to it. It's got hints of damson plum and a finish that flirts with notes of tobacco. The second grape in this blend is Bonarda. Bonarda is a grape variety that very few will have heard of. It's grown in California under the name Charbonno. The grapes themselves have a beautiful deep color and a hint of figs, raisins, cherries, and plums. It's very lovely and rounded with fruit. Argentina is a growing area with a unique situation. If we look on this map here, you can see that Argentina is separated from the Pacific Ocean by the Andes Mountains. These mountains keep the cool, wet Pacific air from coming over them and raining on Argentina. Many Argentinian growing areas are pure desert. They get almost no rain at all, but that is not such a bad thing. On this map here, we've got highlighted the region where the grapes are coming from. The vineyard is Vinas Dona Constanza. It is a true desert region getting almost no rain, but luckily it's irrigated by the San Juan River, fed from the snows of the Andes Mountains. The soil is crucial to the quality of these grapes. It's a loamy, sandy subsoil, but it's only a couple of feet deep, and beneath that is nothing but sand. In this environment, grapes have to struggle a little bit. This reduces the yields and makes sure you get an intense, flavorful harvest of grapes. The slopes all face south, and they're at about 650 meters or about 1,500 feet of elevation, which is key. Every thousand feet you go up a mountainside, the temperature drops and cools. In this way, you get a lot of sunshine units, but the grapes don't cook or bake in the heat and retain their acidity and freshness. Blended together, these grapes make a wine that is rounded, fruity, and rich. It has plums, cherry, blackberry, black currant, spiciness, notes of mulberry, some raisiny character, chocolate, and a toasty oak finish that integrates very well. You will want to hold on to this one for quite a while before you start drinking it. You can taste it at three months. But after about nine, it'll start to come around and knit those flavors together well. It'll mature over the next two to three years, getting better and better with every bottle, and it'll probably hold just about as long in a good cellar. It's a good food wine. The tannins and fruitiness help it stand up against grilled red meat, barbecue, or even hamburgers. This year, we've got a special recipe to go with it. This year's limited edition recipe for the January Red is our best lamb sandwich. It's juicy, slow roasted lamb with garlic mayonnaise, sweet pickled red onion, and basil pesto. The tannin is perfect with the medium rare lamb. Well done meat tends to need a less tannic wine, but if you've got that little hint of pink in there, the tannins help neutralize it and together they taste better than they would separately. Also, the fruitiness picks up the notes of herbs and the depth of flavor of the pickled onion, setting it off just beautifully.